In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's a wonderful day to be in the church here in St. Congles with the young boys and girls, your family who are to be confirmed and to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit into their lives. It's a day of great joy, a day of faith and love, a day of hope. With these thoughts, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. us pray. Lord, fulfill your promise and send your Holy Spirit to make us witnesses before the world to the good news proclaimed by Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's now be seated. I invite the boys and girls who are reading the Word of God to come forward to read. First reading. This reading comes from the story of the Apostles. The followers of Jesus were sitting together in one room, when suddenly they heard the sound of a strong wind blowing right through the whole house, and they could see something like flames of fire everywhere that came and touched each one of them. In this way, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, they went outside and began to tell everyone the story of Jesus. There were people there from every country in the world, and they all heard the good news of Jesus, the word of the Lord. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. You will never sink beneath the the 
Second reading. This reading comes from one of the letters of St. Paul. Dear Titus, when we were baptized, we all became the children of God. This proves how good and kind God is because he still loves, loved us, even though we did not deserve it. When we were baptized, he gave us the spirit of his love to help us to be kind and loving like himself. He did all of this because he wanted us to be his children and to be happy with him forever. The word of the Lord. Please stand to greet the gospel. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit, like a dove, descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favor rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So dear fathers, parents, teachers, and my dear boys and girls, first my warmest congratulations to all of you who are receiving confirmation today here at St. Gongles. I know you have been preparing for this important day. You have studied your faith, you have practiced your faith, you have prayed and you have served those in need. This wonderful day, let me share something with you. I also know, know that a lot of people work really hard to make your confirmation a really a nice event. And it is, should be a truly wonderful, something you will always remember in your life. It is not like a graduation when you finish your school studies and leave your school returning only occasionally say for a reunion or an alumni event. Pope Francis says, confirmation is not the sacrament of goodbye. Goodbye to the Lord and to the church, goodbye to the mass and the sacraments. Instead, I am confident you are thinking of confirmation as sacrament of hello, a new beginning and not an end. More like a commencement than a graduation. After all, Confirmation perfects your baptism, your initiation into the church. It is mean to make you fully a member of the church, not a part-time member. That is why in a few minutes, you will renew your baptismal promises. Today, you take very serious responsibility for your faith and for your relationship with God. Ask yourself, when is the last time you said thank you to your parents? Probably you will have to think about it. Our parents are always present to us one way or the other, and we take them for granted. 
They provide us with everything we need, growing up, food, clothing, allowance, education, and service, advice. The same can be said to be God in our lives. God is everywhere. He sees everything. He knows everything. He created us. We would have nothing, including our parents, unless God gave it to us. So dear children, in a moment, Father Sean and me will anoint your head with oil. This is the sign of the sacrament of confirmation. The first words of Jesus to his disciples following his resurrection were, Peace be with you. After anoint your forehead, we will say those words to you. So they are resurrection words. That Jesus was present his disciples, he is present to you. God is with you always. If you allow him, he fills your life with peace always. Today's scripture readings help you to understand all this. In fact, they tell us three important things to you to need to know on your confirmation day and three things you need to remember for the rest of your life. First, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit. As he began his ministry, and you are being anointed with the Spirit as you embrace an unknown future. So ask the Spirit, help with the decisions you will making for the rest of your life. Secondly, the Holy Spirit connected the apostles to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will keep you connected to Jesus. We saw this in the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles. So today, welcome the Holy Spirit, who will keep you connected to Jesus by daily prayer, Sunday Mass, and regular use of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. The Spirit will help you to become more like Jesus in your daily life, to love what Jesus loved, to reject what was re Jesus rejected. Instead of being greedy, aggressive, and self-centered, you will find true happiness by imitating the gentle, merciful, and loving Spirit of Jesus. And finally, the Holy Spirit filled the apostles with so much joy and courage that they were no longer afraid to speak about Jesus publicly. The Holy Spirit will also make you courageous and joyful witness to Jesus in your life. When the Spirit came upon the time of Pentecost, Peter and other apostles were went out and started the preaching the gospel and winning over thousands and thousands of people for Christ. Nothing and no one could stop them. They were happy even to suffer persecution for Christ. You may not know what occasion God has in mind for you, but know that he has come definite work for you and you alone to do, whatever that it may be. Is it will involve bearing witness to Jesus with joy and courage. Many of you may be called to marriage or family life, others to be maybe the priesthood or consecrated life, or still others to some special form of the service in the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you to accept whatever the Lord will ask you to do in advance, his mission in the world. So my dear children, three things to remember in your life. Like Jesus, you are being anointed with the Holy Spirit. Secondly, the Holy Spirit keeps you connected to Jesus and makes you want to be like him. And finally, the Holy Spirit will guide you to accept your true occasion and mission from God. So I conclude my words with Pope Francis. Holy Spirit is so important for the Christian life and is given to believers in a special way through confirmation. The sacrament gives us the special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith, to confess the name of Christ, and to never be ashamed of his cross. So once again, congratulations to all of you. May the Spirit fill your hearts today and every day of your lives. God bless you all. Amen.
our service of light last week, connected baptism and confirmation. And so today we renew our baptismal promises as part of our journey towards confirmation. I invite all of us to stand. The response is, I do. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works? Empty show. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints? forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, bestowed in us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now we have the imposition of hands when the priests will hold out their hands over you and pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. My dear people, in baptism, God our Father gave the new birth of eternal life to his chosen sons and daughters. Let us pray to our Father that he will pour out the Holy Spirit to strengthen his sons and daughters with his gifts anoint them to be more like Christ, the Son of God. We pray in silence for a moment. And now we sing our hymn, Come Holy Spirit. Boys and girls, I'd ask you to kneel. All powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all be seated now. We come to the key moment of confirmation when the boy or girl is presented by their sponsor and they are anointed with the oil of chrism on their forehead and the priest will say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and you will say amen, which means so be it, I agree. When you're coming forward, the priest will ask you what name you're taking for confirmation. 
and I want you to answer out loudly because I'm old and hard of hearing and people tend to mumble when I listen to them at my age. So, and then I say, peace be with you. You will say, and with your spirit. Sponsors, don't be anxious. The boy or girl you're sponsoring knows what to do. Just follow them. It'll take a little time. Let us enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit with us.
my voice is very much behind the thanks to the Now let us all stand and invite the boys and girls who are reading the prayers of the faithful to come forward. My dear friends, let us be one in prayer to God our Father, as we are one in faith and hope, and in the love his Spirit gives. Lord, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit to show us how to love. We pray that we may listen to the Holy Spirit guiding us on our way to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, Nangalode Churchilum, Scholilum, An Kutigulum, Penkutigulum, Arubil Sakri Prabicha, and Gay Anakumikan Ediakane. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for success of everyone who works for a more just and equal world. Help them in their work to improve the lives of people in their countries where people are persecuted or marginalised. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Para sa mga anak na lalaki at babae ng Diyos, kumpirma hin ng magalagalo ng Espiritu na maari naming bigyan ang saksi sa Kristo sa pamamagitan ng buhay na binuot sa pananampalataya at pag-ibig. Lord, hear us. Panya prashime, abas at foyong pamatsam, na siya spul nata, paminovawa mi wastom, itraskal kasdago. Pomoš nam, abyśmy wzajemnie szanowali naszą odmienność i umieli się nie ucieszyć. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. For the waste of our parish, you have encouraged us and helped us to be followers of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, we pray for the parents and the teachers who have passed on our faith. By their example, we are encouraged to follow the path of Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. God our Father, guide all young people in the church and in society. May the Holy Spirit help guide us to make the world a better place for everyone. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the apostles. Through them and their successors, you give the Spirit to your people. His work begun at Pentecost, 
continue to grow in the hearts of all who believe. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We have our offertory procession now. We bring the gifts to the altar. Let us stand and pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice for the praise and glory of His name, for our and the good of all the Church. Lord, you've signed our brothers and sisters to the cross of your Son anointed them with the oil of salvation. As they offer themselves with Christ, continue to fill their hearts with your spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God our Father, you have brought us here together so that we can give you thanks and praise for all the wonderful things you have done. We thank you for all that is beautiful in the world and for the happiness you have given us. We praise you for daylight and for your word, which light up our minds. We praise you for the earth and all the people who live in it and for our life, which comes from you. We know that you are good you love us and we do great things for us. So we all say together, Holy, 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 Holy God, God. Let us now kneel. Father, you're always thinking about your people. You never forget us. You sent your son, Jesus, who gave his life for us and for all who came to, he came to save us. He cured sick people and cured those who were poor and wept with those who were sad. He forgave sinners and taught us to forgive each other. He loved everyone and showed us how to be kind took children in his arms and blessed them. 
God our Father, all over the world, your people praise you. So now we pray with the whole Church, with Francis our Pope, Lowell our Bishop, in heaven the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Apostles and all the saints always sing your praise. God our Father, you are most holy and we want to show you that we are grateful. We bring you bread and wine and ask you to send your Holy Spirit to make these gifts the body and blood of Jesus, your Son. Then we can offer you what he, you have given to us. The night before he died, Jesus was having supper with his apostles. He took bread from the table. He gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We do now what Jesus told us to do. We remember his death and resurrection. We offer you, Father, the bread that gives us life and the cup that saves us. Jesus brings us to you. Welcome us as you welcome him. And so we pray the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Father, because you love us, you invite us to come to your table. Fill us with joy of the Holy Spirit as we receive the body and blood of your Son. Lord, you never forget any of your children. We ask you to take care of those we love, and we pray for those who have died. Remember everyone who is suffering from pain and sorrow. Remember Christians everywhere and all other people in the world. We are filled with wonder and praise when we see what you do for us through Jesus, your Son, and so we pray. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us now stand. The Saviour's command and divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. The Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Let us now kneel as we prepare to receive Holy Communion. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be seen on the murder. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
now we have our communion reflection. Down through the centuries, from the time of the Apostles and the early Church to today, the Holy Spirit has animated millions of people in every part of the world. These people have worked, some in small ways and some in bigger ways, to make the Kingdom of God come about here on earth. Today, the responsibility to live according to the Gospel falls on us. We must be prepared to work for love, justice and peace among all people, but especially among those people who are least able to look after themselves. The very old, the very young, people who are sick or poor or who have special needs. Throughout our confirmation preparation, we have learned how the Spirit of God can make a real difference in our lives. We have been inspired by the stories of real people who are or were led by the Holy Spirit to strive themselves to make the kingdom of God come about on earth. Those people allowed, allowed the gifts of the Holy Spirit to bear fruit in their lives, and now it is our turn. We go today to show others love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Frequently, we would have had the pledge offered to the young people at this time in the ceremony. But we feel it's such an important decision they make. We we'll give a separate time to that, and hopefully, they'll gather together again at a later date to the, for the pledge mass, and that they will make that pledge to abstain from alcohol. So. Let us now stand and pray. Lord, you give your Son as food to those you anoint with your own spirit. Help them to fulfill your law by living in freedom as your children. May they live in holiness and be your witnesses to the world. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I'd like to congratulate the boys and girls on their sacrament of confirmation and receiving the Holy Spirit in a special way today. They did extremely well and excellent in everything in their singing and their responses, the different parts they were asked to take part in. The only one who made a mistake today was myself. I forgot to call the teachers forward to introduce the classes, so I apologize to our three teachers. Today is a day of pride, not just from the school, from myself, from the teachers and the priests, and from other parishioners, not just from the sponsors and the parents, though you must feel very proud today of your son or daughter. It's a day of pride for the boys and girls themselves, because they have done extremely well in celebrating this sacrament, in preparing for it, and in celebrating it as well as they have done. So I congratulate them and urge them to continue to do good work, to continue to do good things, things that show their love and faith and trust in the ways of God. So I'd like you to join with me in congratulating them and giving them a round of applause. I'm sure
sure there's plenty of celebrations planned for afterwards. And I hope you have a good day and celebrate it well. Let us stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. God our Father made you his children by water and the Holy Spirit. He bless you and watch over you with his fatherly love. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, promised that the Spirit of Truth to be with his church forever. He bless you and give you courage in professing the true faith. Amen. The Holy Spirit can down upon the disciples, set their hearts on fire with love. He bless you, keep you in faith and love, and bring you to the joy of God's kingdom. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah.